Today we will show basic graphing calculator techniques for graphing linear functions. Have your graphing calculator handy so you can do the steps with me. Let's graph y equals 2x minus 3 for x values from negative 10 to 10. Just as when you graph a function by hand, you should first analyze its equation for important information. We know this is a linear function because it's in the form of y equals mx plus b. The graph is a line with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 3. The line will rise from the left to the right because of the positive slope, and the y values will not be very large for x values close to 0. So we could use the zoom 6 standard window to obtain the graph. Let's try that. First, we're going to type the functions and equation into the y equals uh, area of our calculator. And then we're going to press zoom 6 for the standard window. So I press y equals. Remember, we're graphing y equals 2x minus 3. So I enter 2x. Now, some people use this key as opposed to this key. Remember, this is the negative key and this is the subtraction key. So in our case, we're doing 2x uh, minus 3, or 3 is being subtracted from 2x. So use the subtraction key. If you use the negative key, you're going to uh, end up with an error. So we have 2x minus 3. Now we're going to press zoom 6 to get a standard window. So I press zoom, and you see number 6 corresponds to standard. Uh, before I press 6, I want to point out that the standard window is going to give us a grid from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis, counting by ones. So when I press 6, you can see each of these tick marks represents 1, and I'm going from negative 10 to positive 10 in both directions. Uh, so you can see we have a graph here. It's increasing because of our positive slope, and the y-intercept is negative 3, so this looks pretty good. I do have a problem with this graph. I want to know what's happening when x equals 10. Well, my y is somewhere up here, right? If I were to extend this line, when x equals 10, my y is somewhere up here. And when x equals negative 10, my y is somewhere down here. I want to see all that on my, on my screen. So we're going to have to do some work. Remember, when I go back to my window, uh, the standard window is just going from negative 10 to 10 in the x and y direction. So for me to see what's happening up here, my y max at 10 is not enough. I'm going to have to actually go up to y, uh, you know, if this is 10, I need to go up to y equals maybe 20, 30. I'm not really sure, but I know I have to increase my y max. And my y min, is it stops at negative 10 currently. I need to actually increase that to maybe negative 20 or negative 30 to see what's happening down here. So I could just guess and change my y min to negative 20 and y max to positive 30, regraph to see if it works. We'll call this the guess and check method. This can take a long time. Using a table of input output values is a more direct way to determine the range of y values that we will need. This table method is especially useful when y values are very large. For example, if my y was 372, the guess and check method might take quite a while. So let's look at an input output table for inputs from negative 10 to 10 for our example, y equals 2x minus 3. So the first step will be to make sure the equation is entered into your calculator. And if you press y equals, you just want to verify the equation is there. The calculator can only generate a table if it has an equation. Next, we want to obtain table values. So if I press second table set, right, the table sets right above the window. You see here in purple, it says TBLSET. Now, my table is starting at negative 10, which is what I want. Let's say I had a different number here, like 9. Some of your calculators might have 7 or 17. Well, what we want to do is tell the table where to start. So in this case, we're going to use the negative key, not the subtraction key, but negative, oops, let me clear that, negative 10. Right, so I press the negative key and 10, and I'm going to start, my table will start at negative 10. If you have an error in here, press clear and, and try it again. 
Next, this delta table, well, that tells me what am I going to count by. So I want to count by ones. So delta table, we'll start with one. My input will increase by one. If I were to change this number to five, my input would increase by five. If I change the delta table to two, my input would increase by two. Next, we're going to press second. And above graph, you'll see table. And you can see here's my table. I'm counting by ones, or my input's increasing by one. And notice I can use the up and down arrows. If I press the up arrow a few times, you can see what happens. I go from negative 10 to 11 to negative 12 to negative 13 and so on. Uh, but make sure you're in the X column or your input column when you're using the up and down arrows. You see, if I'm in the Y column and I press the up arrow three times, nothing happens. So let's move back to the X area. And now when I press the up arrow, I can go up and I can go down. So why are we here? We want to figure out what our max Y value needs to be and our what, what our min Y value needs to be for our window. So you can see when X is negative 10, it looks like our Y is negative 23. So let's take the one that's uh, right after that. We're going to use a Y min of negative 25. Now for our Y max, let's scroll down to see what happens when X is positive 10. So when x is positive 10, my y is 17. So let's, let's round that to, say, 20. So I'm going to use negative 25 for a y min and positive 20 for a y max. So our next step would be to set the window using the information from the table. So I go back to my window. And now my y min, we're going to use negative 25. And my y max, we're going to use positive 20. Now, on the x side, uh, we're going from negative 10 to 10, and we're going to count by 1. So that means we'll have 10 tick marks to the left of the origin on the x-axis, and 10 tick marks to the right of the origin on the x-axis. Uh, for the y min to y max, we're going to count by 1s, but that's going to give us 45 tick marks. So let's change this. Instead of counting by 1, let's, uh, let's count by 5. So each tick mark will represent 5 units. I now press graph, and now you can see if this is 0 on the y-axis, this is 5, 10, 15, 20, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, and so on. And on the x-axis, we're counting by 1s. Now, this graph looks much better. I can see clearly what's happening. When x is 10, I can see my y is right here. When x is negative 10, here is my y. Right? If you remember in the first graph, the uh, when x was 10, my y was somewhere up here, and when x was negative 10, my y was somewhere down here. Now I have the entire graph on one window. So it's important to note that while Zoom 6 standard will often be fine for graphs of linear functions, using the table to obtain y minimum and y maximum values is especially helpful when the outputs are not between negative 10 and 10. In part two of this video, we'll show an example of this. Thank you for watching.